right, here we go with section 2.4. Get a little bit more light on this. And 2.4, we continue with derivatives. Now, today, what we're going to be learning is the product. and quotient rule. Now, these are a little bit more difficult than the rules we learned in 2.3. They're just a little bit more involved. So let's start with the product rule. And we know product means multiplication, right? So in order to take the derivative, of two functions that are being multiplied. All right. Now, a colleague of mine taught me a little trick to help with this. So we're going to call f of x derivative 1 and g of x derivative 2. OK, and it is 1d2 plus 2d1. So let me write it out to you and then we'll go over it again. So it is one D two plus two D one. So it is one d2 and what d means is derivative so function one take the derivative of the second function 1 d2 plus 2 d1 so just memorize that 1 d2 plus 2 d1 that is your product rule so here is an example all right we're going to have two functions. f of x is equal to x squared plus 1. Get that focused a little bit better. And function 2 is 5x squared minus 1. Okay. All right. So if you are given y is equal to x squared plus 1 times 5x squared minus 1. So this is your f of x. This is your g of x. And so think of this as 1. This is 2. And so when we take the derivative, we do 1d2 plus 2d1. So 1x squared plus 1 d, well, I'm going to write this this way, d2, which means take the derivative, plus 2 d1. So 1d2 plus 2d1. So now we're going to actually take the derivative of what follows. So 1x squared plus 1 times the derivative of this. 2 times 5 is 10x to the 2 minus 1 is just 1. So then the derivative of one is zero, so I don't have to write that, plus two, five x squared minus one, and now we're gonna take the derivative of this, which would be two x. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are now going to take this and use the distributive property so we get 10x cubed plus 10x plus, now we're going to take the distributive property here 
and that would give us 10x cubed minus 2x. And then we're just going to clean it up by combining like terms. So these are like terms. So we have 20x cubed. And these are like terms plus 8x. So if you recall, this is our derivative, instantaneous rate of change, tangent line. Those are the things you need to remember about that. All right, there's one example. We're going to do a second example. Product rule, 1d2 plus 2d1. So y equals the square root of x, open parentheses, 2x squared plus x minus 1. Now, again, I don't like the square root, so we're going to rewrite that so it has an exponent so we can use the product rule. So this would be x to the 1 half times 2x squared plus x minus 1. Okay, now, one approach to this, if you were asked to find the derivative, you could, by all means, you could distribute that through, then just use the product rule and the rules that we learned in 2.3 and you would be fine. But since what we're trying to work on and get practice in is the product rule, plus on an exam, if it says use the product rule, then when I grade, that's my expectations. So this is function one. This is function two, so 1d2 plus 2d1. So the derivative is one d2. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the derivative of this. I'm not gonna write the derivative of, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. So two times two, we would get four x plus one, and then the derivative of this is zero, plus, now we're going to do two, two x squared plus x minus one, times the derivative of this first term, so I'm going to bring this down and I would have one half x raised to the one half minus two over two would be negative one half. Now, we're gonna clean this up just a little bit. So I'm gonna rewrite this as the square root of X times four X plus one plus I'm going to bring this to the front. Now I am going to clean this up. I want to bring this term to the denominator so I don't have the negative exponent anymore and I'm going to go ahead and change it to a radical. So in the numerator I'm going to have one and in the denominator I'm going to have this two and then I'm bringing this down to the denominator so this is positive and I'm going to go ahead and put it in its square root form. And this would be your answer. Now, these take a little bit of work and a little bit of practice. So I highly suggest you take some time to go to the ebook and find some practice problems, the odd answers you can find in the book and just do some practice before you actually get started in web assignment. Oh, there's my desk you saw, which is a glass desk. Huh. Okay. Now we're going to look at the quotient rule. And we know the quotient rule 
deals with division. So we're going to be learning how to take the derivative of a function divided by another function. All right, so there's a little bit of trick with this one too. We're going to call g of x that's in the denominator low, f of x, which is in the numerator, we're going to call high. So how you do this is you take low d high minus high d low, all of that over low squared. All right, so now let's write that with our functions. So it's low, so you always start in the denominator. Low d high minus high d low, all of that over low squared. High d low minus, or I'm sorry, huh, I messed it up. Low d high minus high d low over low squared, okay? All right, so example. So we have the function x plus one over two x minus three. So when I look at this, I say, okay, I have a function and this is division. So we are going to look at this as low and the x plus one will be high. So I'm gonna write it out full. Let me move this, sorry about that. I'll move that down there. Okay. So the derivative, low d high, minus high d low all over low squared. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of derivatives of those. So we have 2x minus 3 times the derivative of this would just be this exponent of one, one times one, so we would just get one, minus x plus one times the derivative of this would be one times two, so you'd get two, and then of course the derivative is three is zero, just like the derivative of the one was zero. All of that, over 2x minus 3 squared. So in cleaning that up, 1 times anything is just 2x minus 3. And we are going to distribute this 2 through, but pay attention to this negative. So 2 times x is 2x, but that would be minus 2x. 2 times 1 is 2, but because of this minus, that would be minus 2. All of that over 2x minus 3 squared. And then combining like terms, 2x minus 2x subtracts out. So that's gone. So we have negative 3 minus 2. So we have negative 5 over 2x minus 3 squared. And then, of course, in WebAssign, if it's a negative, you could put it out front like this. So either one of those would be OK. All right. So a little bit of work with that. All right. So we're going to do another example. and. 
believe it or not, this one's even going to be a little bit more involved. All right, so you have to be very intentional when you're doing these because it's easy to make a, a, a simple mistake. All right, so the function in the numerator, x squared minus 3x plus 5, and in the denominator, x cubed plus x. And of course, as soon as I see this, I know I have a quotient. Here's my low, here's my high. All right, so we're gonna go straight into finding the derivative. So it is low x cubed plus x times the derivative of the high. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go straight into the derivative. So I'm gonna take the derivative of this, which would be two x minus three, minus high x squared minus 3x plus 5 times the derivative of the low. So I'm going to take the derivative of the denominator, which would be 3x squared plus 1. All of that over the denominator squared. Okay, haven't done yet. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply these. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply these two binomials by basically applying FOIL. So first times first will give me two X to the fourth, outside times outside, minus 3x cubed inside times inside plus 2x squared last times last minus 3x. Now minus and I'm going to go ahead and keep these parentheses and then I'll deal with the minus afterwards. Some of y'all might go ahead and do that in one step, but for this first one, I'm just going to do this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply x squared times both of these. So that would give me 3x to the fourth, taking x squared times 3x squared, 3x to the fourth, plus x squared. Now I'm going to take minus 3x and multiply it times both of these. So this would give me minus 9x cubed minus 3x, and I'm running out of room. I wrote too big. Now I'm going to take 5 and multiply it times both of these. So it's plus 15x squared plus 5. Sorry about that. I'll squeeze this together and make more room for this. Now, all of that over x cubed plus x squared. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna distribute this negative through. So I'll move all of that over so you can see it better. So we've got two x to the fourth minus three x cubed plus two x squared minus three x. And now I'm just gonna change the sign on everything because we're distributing that through. So I have minus 3x to the fourth minus x squared plus 9x cubed plus 3x minus 15x squared minus 5. All of that over x cubed plus x squared. All right, so now we're going to look for like terms. All right, so here's to the fourth and here's to the fourth. So two minus three would be negative one X to the fourth. All right, so then we've got cubed, 
cubed, so negative three plus nine, so that would be plus six x cubed. Then we've got squared, squared, squared. So I have two minus one would just be one, one minus 15, so we have negative 14x squared. And then I have x, well, well, and x. So I have minus 3x plus 3x. Well, guess what? That's 0. So those subtract out. And then the only thing I have left is minus 5. All of that over x cubed plus x squared. That took a little work. Now, that is perfectly sufficient for an answer. Let's say you were working this in your ebook and it gave the answer as this. Now, that is the same answer, because if you'll notice what they did is they said, you know what, we really don't like this negative being in front of the first term. We're going to move it here in front of the whole thing, which means, in essence, every one of these signs just changed. So these two are the same answer. So just know I would be okay with this for an answer, but if you were looking in the back of the book, it might give that other answer as this, okay? All right. In your course material and um, assignments in Blackboard under Unit 2, there is this. That way we don't have to write all of this out in our notes. So now we're going to take what we've learned and do some application with this. Okay? All right. You notice it says application and interpretation. So a communications company has installed a cable television system in a city. The total number in, so here's our in, in thousands of subscribers for T months after the installation of the system is given by. All right, so here's the function that's given. So let's talk about and define input and output. All right, so because of the T here, we know that T is input, and up here that represent month, represents months. So if I did one, that would mean one month, you know, seven would be seven months and so forth. So input is months. So what is output? Output is the function, which if we look, they're talking about subscribers. So it's your number of subscribers, and this is in thousands. So if your output was just the number 10, that wouldn't mean just 10 subscribers. That would mean 10,000 subscribers. So just be aware of that as well. Okay. Find the instantaneous rate of change. All right. Well, we've talked about this right here and what that means. Instantaneous rate of change is your tangent line, which also means take the derivative. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to take its derivative. Okay, when I look at this, I go, hmm, that looks like the quotient rule. So here we have low, here we have high. So the derivative of that is low d high, which would just be 180, minus high d low. 
And if I look here and I take the derivative of the denominator, that would just be one. All of that over low squared. So now we're just gonna do this multiplication. So 180 times T, so 180 T plus 180 times four, which is 720 minus 180 T, all of that over T plus four squared. Now I ran out of room, so I'm gonna put it over here because hopefully you see that you have 180T minus 180T. So that's zero. And so we get 720 over T plus four squared. Now this is gonna give us the rate of change of subscribers. So um, it, ooh, it's the rate of change when you're dealing with the derivative, it's the rate of change, not actual number of subscribers. So you have to remember that, okay? All right, so if you look at part B, it says find N of T. Now this is N of T, not the derivative, okay? So, and I think I meant to put, Yep, I didn't put everything on here. Hmm. Okay, so this should be find n of 16 and interpret, okay? So I left out the number 16. So find n of 16 and interpret. So this is the original function. So 16 means 16 months, and the output will be the actual number of subscribers. Okay, so I'm gonna come back up here and I'm gonna do N of 16 would equal 180 times 16, all of that over 16 plus four. And so if you go to your calculator, that's 2,880 over 20. Let me recalculate that just to make sure I did not make an error. 180 times 16, yep. And then if I divide that by 20, I get 144. Now, this is subscribers Okay, so, but be careful. This is not um, 144 subscribers, it's 144,000 subscribers. So if we go to the interpret, it would be after 16 months, because T is 16, so after 16 months, the number of subscribers is, and we're not gonna put just 144, because remember it's in thousands, so it's 144,000, okay? All right, now this one is saying the derivative of that the instantaneous rate of change. So remember, now we're talking about what is the rate of change. All right, so now again, we're gonna do this for 16. So now we're gonna use the derivative. So we're going to use this one right here. Seven hundred and twenty over sixteen plus four squared. Now that's seven hundred and twenty over twenty. 
20 squared which would be 720 over 400. Now you could have just put that into your calculator. And we get 1.8. Now, again, remember, this is your instantaneous rate of change, okay? So what this tells us is because it's 1.8, subscribers per month, where this was 144,000 subscribers. So it's not till the derivative do you get the per, if you remember when we talked about that, hmm, I think that was in 2.2. Okay, all right, so how do we interpret this? The subscription rate, because we're talking about an instantaneous rate of change, the subscription rate is increasing one point eight. thousand subscriptions per month. Now, notice our number here, sorry about that, I keep hitting the desk occasionally. 1.8 was a positive number, so subscriptions are going up 1.8 thousand increasing, okay? So the key here is because this is positive, it is increasing per month because it is possible for your calculations to give you a negative. If it gave you a negative number, then that would mean that the subscription rate is decreasing by 1.8 thousand subscriptions per month. So whether this is positive or negative, tells you if the rate is going up and increasing or if the rate is going down, which means it's decreasing, okay? All right. Last part, D. All right, use these results to estimate the number of subscribers after 17 months, okay? Well, here was the number of subscribers at 16 months. And based upon our instantaneous rate of change, we're saying that it should increase approximately one point. Well, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do this as 100 and, uh, 144 instead of converting it to 1,000. So I'm gonna do 144, just know we're talking about thousands, okay? And it will increase by 1.8 thousand subscribers. So after 17 months, when you add that, that would be 145.8. So again, this is an approximation. Squiggly lines means approximation. Okay, so based upon our instantaneous rate of change, we're saying that month 17, we should have approximately 145,800 subscribers. Okay, well, let's compare that. Let's take the original function and put 17 in. So take the original function where we inputted inputted where we input months and it spits out number of subscribers. So I'm gonna go up to the top function and do 180 times 17 divided by 17 plus four. And I'm just gonna to go to my calculator and do that. And I get 145.714, I'm just gonna go 7143. And sure enough, 
It's not exact, but it is approximate. Okay. So they were what under a hundred off. So that's a pretty good estimation. Okay. All right. So the last thing that we need to talk about in this section is the average cost per unit. Okay, so we've done the cost per unit, which is C of X, but we've not ever done the average cost per unit. Okay, so that formula is the average cost per unit is equal to the cost function divided by whatever your number of input. All right. So let me see how I wanted to. Okay, so here's what this is saying. X is your number of units. And C of X is your cost of those units. So we're dealing with money. So like if I inputted five, it outputs the cost for me to have to buy five units, okay? So just kind of a simplistic example is, suppose I told you that the cost of five units was $30. So we purchased five of something, so I bought all five, and the total cost was $30. So this right here is your total cost. So if I asked for the average cost of those, then it's your total cost, $30, divided by the number of units that you bought, which was five, so it's the total cost divided by five, which would tell us then our average cost was $6 per whatever we bought. Let's say we bought books. So I bought five books. I went into a bookstore, bought five books, and they said, okay, you owe me $30. Now, those books could all be different prices. This one could be a dollar. This one could be $7. All we know is that it added up. But what this tells me is that when I bought the five books, it cost me on average $6 per book, okay? All right. A Little bit more in-depth example. Cost function is given, so this is separate from that example, brand new example. All right, so now we're gonna get an actual cost function, 1,000, plus 25x minus 0.1x squared, okay? So again, it's still x is the number of units that you purchased, and then c of x would be your total cost, all right? Now, here's something that's a little bit different. I'm not going to give you actual numbers yet for x, so it's going to take a little bit more work. So you might be asked to find the average cost per unit. Now, if we had actual numbers to put in for X, we could calculate it and do it just like we did up here. But we don't have that right now, so we're gonna have to do it in general form. All right, so the average cost per unit, and again, it's still C of X, so here's my C of X, 1,000 plus 25X minus 0.1X squared divided by X, okay? All right, now, if you remember, 
this x is a denominator to each one of these terms. So I'm going to put 1000 over x plus 25x over x minus 0.1x squared over x. And then I'm going to simplify where I can. So this is 1000 over x. So it stays the same. These x's cancel. So this leaves me with 25. And there's two x's on top and one on bottom, so I can cancel out one of them. So here is your average cost. Okay. So then you may be asked to find the marginal average cost. And remember, this means, oh yeah, I need to take the derivative, okay? All right, well, in order to take the derivative, I wanna look at this as 1000x to the negative one, so I can apply my product rule, okay? So I'm gonna take the derivative, I'm gonna look at this. So I have 1000 times, that would be negative one, x to the negative one minus one would be negative two. The derivative of this is zero and the der derivative of this would be one times that. So it'd just be minus 0 0.1. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. So I would have negative 1000 over x squared minus 0 0.1. So we're done with finding the derivative of that. So again, the marginal average cost. So then evaluate the marginal average cost at x is equal to 10. So when it asks, it gives us the input so we're gonna do 10. And since it's the marginal average, then I'm gonna use this one. So I would put in negative 1000 over 10 squared minus 0 0.1. All right, so if I go to my calculator, Get where you can see that. All right, whoops, might help to have my calculator on. All right, so in a fraction, negative 1,000 over 10 squared minus 0.1, negative 10.1. Now, since this is a derivative, remember it is something per something. All right, so output was dollars. So this is dollars per unit because my input was the number of units. Okay, well, how do you have negative dollars? So remember, it's okay to be a negative. Negative means that it is decreasing. So in our example with subscribers, we got a positive 1.8, which means it was increasing. Now we have a negative, so it means it's decreasing. So how do we interpret that? The rate of change in cost, because we're dealing with a cost function, is and because it's negative, we know it is decreasing at a rate of $10.10. So we don't say negative $10. The negative represents the decreasing, but it's decreasing at this rate per 
unit, which makes sense because the more that you produce, the cheaper it is to make them, okay? So the key is because this is negative, this is decreasing. All right, there you go with what we do, 2.4. Have a great day.